Hello, my soccer universe. Decided to do the Europa League uh, roundup of match day three in the room in Northern Car. That's just way too much that I would need to remember. And also, I have a little bit more time Friday mornings. I'm actually quite happy because my Lusk managed a point in Eindhoven, which was not expected from my point of view. Also, these beautiful jerseys made their official debut. And there's also a day before me. My mother managed to get the Europa League logo on this one and the Respect logo. So I have all the jer all my last jerseys, European last jerseys, are now properly done. On the pink one, also, also both things there. So quite happy about that one too. Um, I'm gonna tell you about the last game because that's the game I saw most, and then we run through the results and I give you a little bit because there was actually quite some controversy and one theme. Not that many home wins, and if they were, they were late, so that's also something that I found very intriguing yesterday. The last match could have gone wrong right from the get go, and uh, despite our good pressing style and generally, you know, very nasty way to play against um, always attacking, 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 uh, which is nice to watch. The one weakness that we have is that our defense, especially our captain, are rather slow, and then you have a um, Steven Bergwijn at PSV, whose forte is speed. And after 40 seconds already, uh, he ran clear on goal. Thankfully, we have a good goalkeeper. Maybe the next national team keeper of Austria. He's at least the under-21 uh, goal goalkeeper. I honestly have to say he should be in goal. Uh, he has been sensational in Europe. Absolutely. Uh, and yesterday, yeah, uh, after 44 seconds, here he again managed to keep a Bergwijn off balance. PSV in the first 15 minutes probably should have scored. Uh, it was, it was, uh, Lask was not on the field. They really were nervous. They needed to adjust themselves. It was not a nice thing to watch uh, at, at first. And especially when uh, Schwab, uh, after a corner, <laughs> made a header against the crossbar, I thought, oh, we are really lucky. I mean, all the bad luck that we had against Sporting, it was now coming back on our side to have the luck. Didn't go all the way, because if we would have, then we would have actually won this game. Which, honestly, that would have been uh, too much. But it took us a little while to get control over the game. And in the end... Uh, they had a short period in the in the first half, so around the 30th, where suddenly they at that point they hadn't even had a contact in the box, but suddenly they get free kicks, they get corner kicks. There was a really good chance by um, uh, Michal that got blocked. I think that would have found the net. Um, uh, Trauna after free kick also uh, he was just the ball kicked away in front of him. So uh, they were better in the, in, in, in the game towards the end of the first half. In the second half, actually, it was way more open. Again, the the game was hanging balance. It, to me, it was not a boring nil-nil because there were chances uh, and both teams, both team strengths played into each other's weaknesses. And that made for really good watching. Um, and yeah, again, Schwab... A late head, uh, uh, in, in the second half again had a header that our goalkeeper saved with his head. Again went the van again the, against the crossbar. So those, this was the second big chance. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be a whole lot long, uh, 30, 35 minutes when that happened. It was around the 60th. But then actually Ragut uh, got the chance and probably should have buried it, put it over the bar. Uh, he came off, then Klaus came on, who again had a, a header that is should, that should be a sitter. Um, yeah, on the other side, PSV was always dangerous on the counter deck, only when Steven Bergwijn um, pulled his hamstring probably and couldn't take off. Van Bommel right, was preparing two exchanges, uh, especially Mitroglou coming on, which kind of made me nervous. But um, Bergwijn said, I'm all right, and then he's not all right, and he's wobbling around, and at that point I thought, I was not secure, but I thought, yeah, we might just get this point, and we got this point. Very happy about that one. Uh, the only thing is that Sporting won against Rosenberg with a, well, a rather fluky goal. Rosenberg playing in the same combination pink and white as Lust did, which 
on one side makes sense, on the other side, I've never seen the Rosenberg playing pink. But then, uh, but till this season, I never saw Lask playing pink. So, um, fair game. Okay, so that was my personal highlight of the evening. That was the one match that I saw. Let's go through the results yesterday. Uh, today, the uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday, the lower groups is from G to L were the early games, except for Karabakh against Apoel, which we have right on top here. That was also played uh, early. I understand in Azerbaijan you need to play it early. Uh, Karabakh to cook lead up well. I think before the break even got the two uh, turned the game around. Uh, very weird two one. Uh, very it's just a miss hit free kick in, in the own half. Uh, crazy and then Karabakh makes it two two. Sevilla takes some time but then eventually gets the uh, goals to make it a three nil. So in that table Sevilla is now nine points. Karabakh four. Dudonosh three and Apoel only one point. Um, Group B, uh, Kopenhagen gets a very early uh, lead, but Dynamo Kiev manages an equalizer, so the two top teams uh, remain on the top. Malmö and uh, Lugano, um, Malmö wins 2-1, um, was actually quite comfortable for most time for Malmö and Lugano. Uh, gets a late consolation goal. So yeah, Malmo is also in the running. They're very tight group there. Uh, Basel gets a win at Getafe. That's an eye opener. Uh, so the, for the first time, Getafe does not uh, is not getting points. I mean, they've won the two two games, and Basel kind of asserts themselves in this group. Whereas Krasnodar gets a late win at Trabzonspor. Uh, also, given that Krasnodar really started hor horribly in this group, that's uh, gold, gold for them, but it seems like Basel and Getafe in this group are the ones to watch. Um, group D, where I said, uh, last nil nil, uh, Sporting 1 nil, so it's also 7 6 4 on the top. I think. Regardless of how the home game against PSV ends, if Lask gets six points out of the last two games, Rosenborg away from home and uh, Sporting uh, at home, they might actually manage to go in the top two. Uh, one of the best games of the evening happened in Celtic Park with um, Lazio taking an early lead, uh, having a chance to make it 2-0, Korea just hitting the post. And then Celtic turns it around in the last half hour um, and gets uh, the win, which was huge for them because uh, Lazio is clearly in trouble here. Uh, Cluj gets a win at Rennes, an uh, absolute um, horrible game where a uh, goalkeeper is sent off for Rennes early on from the resulting free kick. Cluj takes the lead. Um, Niang then misses a penalty for Ren. Another Ren defender is sent off, and then a yellow red for Cluj. So absolutely a nonsense, a nonsense game. And it's Celtic and Cluj, and not Lazio and Ren, as I would have um, thought that are now leading this group and actually looking quite comfy doing so. Arsenal also needed some heroics, late heroics. Um, because Guimaraes twice took the lead in the first half. Uh, I think the first goal was by a former. Tottenham uh, youth player. Uh, so it's 2-1 at the half and it really looks like for the longest time the Gimaresh is going to pull off the upset here. Uh, but no, Pepe with two free kicks late in the game uh, turns the game around and this is I think his first goals for Arsenal. Frankfurt gets um, a workman-like win uh, against Standard Liege. Uh, both goals scored by uh, defenders, um, Abraham and Hinteregger, and then Standard pulls one back. Standard again playing in yellow. The red should have worked against the black of Frankfurt, and I don't like the Frank Frank Frankfurt playing in all black. Or Please play in your home jerseys that you use in the league, but okay. So in that group, uh, pretty clear now. Arsenal, Frankfurt, Standard, Gima, Resch at the moment. Group G, we had young boys getting a 2-0 win over Feyenoord and Porto. And I actually think this is a pretty uh, interesting group. Um, Porto getting a lead, but then Rangers equalizes and it stays this way. I did not expect that. So young boys, the Swiss teams are actually quite good uh, with uh, Basel and uh, Bern. Um, six points, Rangers and Porto four and Feyenoord only three, but uh, this is a wide open group um, as one would expect given who's in there. I think this is probably one of the, mo the most interesting groups in this year's Europa League. Um, CSK Moscow loses at home to Ferencvaros. This is also a group that's really crazy because CSK Moscow is not doing anything in this group. 
uh, the Russian teams are the big disappointment there. And Espanyol gets a win at Ludogorets. Bulgarians uh, lose for the first time. So it's Espanyol now on top of the table. Ludogorets still with six and then Ferenc Varos with four. Moss CSKA still with zero points. Um, very contentious game in Group I between Ghent and Wolfsburg, where Wolfsburg actually takes the early lead at the halftime. I think it was 2 0 at the half. Uh, Joao Victor, the best Lusk striker last season, he scores his first goal for Wolfsburg, I think. Um, and Ghent then pulls one back, but it still seems like uh, Wolfsburg can hold on. They were largely the. I don't want to say more active side, but from what I could, could, could see, they controlled the game. But in the end, it's uh, there was a danger of sleep slipping away. And when Ghent uh, gets the equalizer very, very, very late, it's super contentious. It's probably an own goal, but the Ghent striker had his foot so high in the air, right at foot level, that I think it should have been given for dangerous play and the goal should have been chalked off. Um, and um, yes, there are a lot of former last players at Wall, 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 Wall I'm, I'm actually quite neutral. I don't cared that much for Wolfsburg, to be honest. Saint Etienne only won one against Alexandre. I think Alexandre even took a lead in that one. So in that group now, Wolfsburg and Ghent both with five points and Alexandre and Saint Etienne uh, both with two points. I think on the first match day we had, we had the winners with Wolfsburg and Ghent and since then has been only draws in that group. Um, a super interesting and tight group is uh, Group J. Also there are uh, Bajakshi here get a somewhat lucky win against Wolf, Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg missing chances, especially in the first half. Then uh, two or two CM Bajak here got the uh, win, yeah, was better. A draw would have been the fair result there, although, yeah, Wolfsburg probably could have made something more, would have been good for them in the table. And Roma Gladbach playing in pouring rain in Rome, I saw actually quite some of that. Zaniolo gets the early lead for Rome, 1-0, and... Uh, should have had I mean, Florenzi was running clear on goal, they should have made it uh 2 0. Gladbach had more of the ball, was maybe also in the game, but not really dangerous. It really thought that that Roma will hang on to it, and then in the end, uh, they get a penalty for nothing. There was a free kick, uh, that hits uh, the shot and uh, from the free kick hits Smalling in the face, and the referee takes this as a handball and gifts Gladbach a penalty that um, Stindl converts to make it 1-1. It was an absolute disgrace. Uh, even on the German um, channel that I was watching um, the conference, they, they were saying, this is this is an outrage. Uh, this Yes, we take the point, but it was almost the same time. The same time that Wolfsburg's lead was taken away, which kind of felt unfair. Gladbach gets a point, which also felt kind of unfair. Uh, absolute disgrace this call. 1-1. One, one, uh, the referee uh, was immediately after, because it happened in the 94th, the game ended shortly after. The Roma players were running toward, towards him. Credit to the coach Fonseca, who kind of pulled his play away and said, you guys go away, I handle this. Uh, absolute disgrace. So this group remains also wide open. Roma leading with five, but Jacques Chien now overtaking Wolfsburg with uh, four points each for those, and then Gladbach has only two points. Gladbach getting the points only with late wins. Um, then Besiktas losing at home to Braga. Braga taking twice the lead. Besiktas does equalize, but uh, it's too little too late. And Wolves turned around against Slovan. I think Wolves had a, a played in green, this, which also I thought was weird. So uh, it is Braga and Wolves now ahead of this group. Slovan with four points is also hanging in there. Besiktas, uh, probably the team that will have no chance in this group. And then the last group where uh, United gets through, I think it was a, was it a penalty? gets a kind of lucky win against Partizan because Partizan at least once hit the woodwork. I want to say even twice. So there could have been a big result for Partizan and Alkma absolutely destroys Astana. It took a while, but in the end the goals came fast and came hard. 6-0. So it's United with not really convincing, <laughs> having 7 points, uh, Alkma 5, Partizan 4 and Astana is the whooping boy in this group. Well, that ends the Europa League. I would love to hear from you what you have to say uh, about yesterday's games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that will be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.